Welcome to the second video in our series, The Scientific Principles of Weightlifting. This is the video uh, of Principle of Overload. So the Principle of Overload uh, states that training must become increasingly more difficult than it was in order for us to maintain progress and to continue to further make adaptations. Basically what we need to do is have some form of overload of some means that we're training, whether that be the number of repetitions you do, the amount of weight you lift, the distance you move, etc. For this video, obviously, we're talking about weightlifting. So we're going to go over some of the basic principles, basic parameters of overloading. What do we overload? What do we make progressively harder during the training cycle to ensure that we continue to progress? An overview of the overload parameters of different phases. So in our physics structure, early on the training cycle, we have a general phase. The basic parameters of overload here in our general phase are going to include an increase in the, in the amount of volume we do in the general exercises. We're looking for adaptations uh, in muscular size, general strength, basic coordination, uh, flexibility, mobility, etc. The basic things we're overloading, those parameters are going to be volume. An increase in volume will produce an increase in all other factors being equal, produce an increase in muscular size. The, an increase in intensity along with this is going to increase the general strength of the athlete. This phase is going to include more basic coordination movements, uh, things like jumping and throwing, and then much more simpler variations of the Olympic lifts to start to allow us to make the training technique or make the technique of training become progressively harder and harder in the future. During the strength phase, or the second phase of training in our training process or training cycle, we're primarily not focused now on increasing volume as we progress. The overload stimulus is now going to be uh, that of intensity. We're trying to make the muscles that we just made bigger learn to produce more force. We're also trying to increase the degree of difficulty of the technique. We're moving from less specific exercises to more specific exercises that mimic the actual coordination of uh, maximum intensity snatch and maximum intensity clean and jerk. This is going to include exercises that are no longer partial variations of the snatch and clean and jerk, but may include complexes uh, such as a snatch pull plus a snatch or multiple repetitions of clean and jerk with medium and heavy weights, and then other variations that are very closely related that mimic the technique in a specific way, but are still somewhat easier to accomplish. Example would be like jerk from behind the neck. Then finally in our peaking phase, uh, there's going to be still a slight increase in the uh, intensity. There's still some overload in the intensity. In this phase, uh, the primary goal though is generally going to be in reducing any residual fatigue, decaying that fatigue so that we can realize the adaptations we've made. Uh, and depending on how long the peaking phase is, we may still be increasing and still overloading the number of the amount of intensity we have and increasing the actual number of lifts we do with very heavy weights. The general trend for the training cycle is always going to go from less overload to more overload. And with those parameters in weightlifting are generally going to be the number of 90% lifts that we do in any one week or any one month or any one phase. We're gonna start with less heavy classic snatch and clean and jerk with more basic coordination exercises and more general exercises and overload as we progress from block to block with more heavy 90% plus snatches and clean and jerks as these are the primary driver of the results in the snatch and clean and jerk. Proper application of overload and weightlifting is going to be working from the lowest least specific volumes and movements to the highest intensities most specific volumes within the progression. Always progressing from less specific to more specific and from lower volumes, lower intensities to higher volumes, higher intensities. The basic principle we use uh, when we're talking about the overload here is the minimum amount of effective dose. So the minimum effective volume in training is essentially the starting point for most of our overload. We're doing just enough work to maintain the results we have or maintain our abilities and from there we overload in a progressive fashion until we get to the maximum uh, recoverable volume of our training 
which would be the most work that can possibly be done without uh, the athlete suffering any kind of injury or basically having no ability to do more volume. Somewhere within that period, somewhere between those two points, there is the maximum effective volume. And that is essentially the point at which we're looking to reach with all of our training prior to the maximum recoverable volume. This is the point at which we're gonna get the most benefit for the amount of work we're doing. When training and when overloading in certain periods, we may be looking to overreach. We may be looking to push the overload stimulus to the point where we've overreached. Now we've done more work than we could recover from. And then we remove the overload stimulus, have what we call a deload, recover, and we now are at a new functional level following that period. A lifter who's doing an insufficient amount of work, an insufficient amount of volume or intensity or, or some manifestation of this through a lack of frequency uh, would end up with the athlete being detrained and not having uh, an improvement of results during the entire training period. An example of how this could look would be as if the athlete spends too much time doing technique work or light training uh, during the training week, during the mesocycle or microcycle. This would produce a situation where the athlete may have good technique because they've practiced a lot, but they don't train with the correct intensities or enough overload to actually produce any results. An example of an over application or the over application of the overload principle would be an athlete who's doing too much volume, too large of workloads will produce an undesired result in that the athlete may have more work capacity than strength. If you're doing too much training and you're able to execute the volume, you may end up in a position where you're not developing the actual qualities you want in a weightlifter and developing something more to the side of uh, a higher work capacity, ability to tolerate that very, very large training load, but without the high results that should accompany it. You might also develop poor technical skills because of the amount of fatigue uh, that's accumulated from those large training volumes. Too much intensity can lead to uh, a difficulty in the ability to execute the technique properly. If you're training with near maximum weights, even if it's with a manageable amount of volume, uh, the overload may be excessive in that you, you're not able to recover enough and the fatigue accumulated forces you to perform the lifts poorly uh, with insufficient technical skills. There's a diminished peaking effect in the fact that you've trained with only maximum intensities or with too much and you've exhausted the ability to have a, an excellent peak because you're constantly in this uh, fight or flight position where maximum intensity is no longer uh, and a situation that arouses the nervous system. You don't become excited at competition. If you liked what you heard in this video, go ahead and head over to jtsstrength.com for more information on weightlifting and powerlifting and hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you.